while we wait for some uh, protective gear to come for welding up the bronze because it does release quite a bit of fumes we're going to take the next week here where we got some really good weather and focus on finishing getting victoria taken apart Well there ladies and gents, I think it's about time to officially say goodbye to Victoria. Uh, previously we had pulled her interior out and then we had a really bad windstorm and the tarp that was covering her just split right down the middle. So we took that off and we just covered her with a tarp for a while. But since it was still winter and we had snow and ice and rain, it's just been nasty. We put off finishing taking her apart until we had a run of like one week of good weather where we could pull the covers off her and just finish taking her all apart. Because as soon as we take the deck off, there's not really going to be a good way to tarp her. Um, so that week has come. We've got great weather coming up. Yesterday we finished making our first bronze floor, so we know that that'll work. But now it's a perfect time to finish taking apart Victoria. So the next few days here, we're just going to go pale mail and hopefully get her down to nothing but a ballast keel here pretty soon. Follow the familiar process of scraping paint, looking for and removing bungs, and then pulling out screws, most of which were breaking off in the process. Yeah, I'm having some things that are breaking off, just spinning in there. Five o'clock, like half of the third, top maybe. of that. I guess maybe a third. This is time to call it a day. Getting Victoria down to the keel timber was going to take a few days. The next morning, we finished up the slow process of taking off her house top. Well, we got the house top off. It was a lot of pulling bugs and scratching out the slots in the uh, slotted screws and pulling the screws out. And I think at some point the house top was refastened because the screws aren't in atrocious shape. They're in pretty bad shape, but a lot of them did come out, which is more than we can say for the deck. So I think the plan from here is we gotta pop these beams out and we'll save them since most of the screws came out, they don't have a ton of metal in them. And we'll take the house sides apart. And once the house sides are on the workbench, pulling out the port lights will be even easier. So we'll wait on that. And then I think we're gonna bust out the Sawzall and start trying to free the deck. Since the screws in the deck are just totally shot, um, we can't really get any of them to come out. It means that the deck beams are just full of fasteners. Um, so it's kind of a toss up between trying to save the decking material or trying to save the beams. And since we can cut off the screws, between the uh, decking and the deck beams and then use a punch to punch them out of the deck. Uh, I think it makes more sense to try to save the material on the deck than to try to salvage the deck beams. Um, so we will take the house top apart here and then uh, probably fire up the Sawzall and get rowdy. Before we got too much farther along, we wanted to get a few measurements which would come in handy down the road. Also, check out how they ran the old wiring routered and hidden into the house stop beams. Definitely not how we will be doing it. This is what Arabella will look like in the not too, too distant future. Yeah.
So we had worked on the aft deck here previously, and what we found was that the fasteners are so corroded that they're just ringing off in the deck beams. So these deck beams back here, literally every inch down them, they have a bronze screw embedded, and there's no real good way to get those out uh, to salvage those beams. The decking, on the other hand, the screws are you know a foot, 14 inches apart. So we have a bit of room there of unadulterated mahogany and we can get the screws out even if they break off or we cut them off because we can just pop them out from the other side easy as pie. So for the rest of it, we decided that we're gonna turn to the Sawzall and get it between the deck beams and the decking and slice those fasteners off. And then we can just sit at the bench and pop the bungs out and pop the screws out and save hopefully a majority of the decking. Uh, we'll have to scrape the paint off it and clean it up a little bit, but there still should be some usable mahogany. And the nice thing will be there's good size runs without any fasteners. Um, and the fasteners that were there will be gone. Um, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to scrap the deck beams, but that's the way it goes with this. And there's another thing up forward a bit that we found as we were cleaning things up and pulling the house sides off that we wanna show you that's kinda neat. All right. So we're up forward here on Victoria, and this is where her mast was. Victoria was a cutter, so she's had the one, and our boat will be a catch, so she'll have two. And this is the sill here that the house top was built onto. And a neat thing that we're seeing with Victoria is a lot of the things that we've read about. Um, so boats have kind of funny things sometimes, like a tie rod at the mast. And you're like, why would you put a tie rod at the mast? And you read about it more and you find it's because the deck lifts. And you're like, how does the deck lift? That's totally counterintuitive. Don't you think the deck would sag and sink? Um, and what ends up happening is that when the mast is here, the mast, imagine it's pushing down on the keel and the rigging that holds the mast up, the shrouds, go from the mast down to the side of the boat, and they're pulling up so that they can you know, hold that mast up in tension. And what they end up doing is taking the deck and buckling it up because the beam of the boat actually changes ever so slightly. It starts to come in a little bit from those chain plates. And what allows that to happen is because the deck can rise. So I don't think the plans call for a tie rod. I'd have to go look real quick and see. Um, but Victoria definitely didn't have one. And it's really obvious now after almost 100 years to see what's happened. And if you look aft, the deck is perfectly level with the sill that holds the house stop. And if you come up here forward, it's at least a quarter inch up. And when it goes up that little bit, it creates a dam right here, which holds the fresh water, which lets it leak into the deck, which makes it rot more, which makes it bulge more, and just exacerbates itself. Um, so it's really neat to take Victoria apart slowly, and that's part of the reason that you see us running the vacuum all the time and trying to be neat about it. One is so that we don't get paint chips everywhere, um, but two is so that we can kind of see and notice these small details about where things sagged, where things shifted, and a lot of it is classic stuff that we've read about, like the mass tie rods. Um, but it's cool to, to see that actually in practice and see how it all behaved. We're continuing on Victoria's disassembly. Um, however, we got a couple orders in, so I'm gonna run into town, run a couple errands, send off some packages, and uh, he's gonna get started on pulling up the deck. And I'll try to get back as soon as possible so we can continue on the work that we have to do today. After Alex left, I did a little sawzalling, but honestly the fore deck was even worse than the aft deck. So I found out that with the pry bar, it was pretty easy just to get it to come up. And I got most of the deck to come up in pretty long runs, uh, which is really great. But she's totally shot. I had a deck beam break out from underneath me, and now that more and more is apart, it's just getting floppier and floppier and floppier. So Alex is back now. I'm gonna take off the track here and work on pulling the covering board. We gotta pop the screws out of all of the uh, decking that seemed, you know, worthy enough of hanging on to for a while. A lot of it was just rotten and got tossed. Um, but hopefully at the end of the day here we'll get the whole deck off, the tow rails, and be able to see just the framing. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, we made good progress today. We got all of the deck off of Victoria. Some of it came up scarily easily. Um, but we did manage to save a decent amount of mahogany and there's also a bunch that was just totally shot. And now we're at the point where we've got the frames, the planking, the center line, and the deck beams. And that's all that's left. And we're at the point where it's starting to become a very exciting game of Jenga. Um, things are rotten, things aren't very well attached, and the more we take her apart, the less structurally sound she is, now that the shoe is terribly structurally sound to begin with. So we've been hemming and hawing a little bit at this point, and I think the next course of action is going to be to take the Sawzall and just free the deck beams. And like we were saying, the majority of them are so full of rotten fasteners that there's not really much we can do with them. So we're going to cut those out and keep our fingers crossed that Victoria doesn't just totally plop open. And the reason we're going to do it that way is that the frames are completely shot. And right here we cut out a chunk of frame and we pried it out from the inside and it came out really easily. Um, so we want to try to save as much as the planking as possible. So it seems like the best way to do it. So if we take off all of the deck structure and hopefully she doesn't totally blow open on us, now we can go above where our supports are, which are in here somewhere, take out the upper parts of the frames, take out all of the upper planks, and then we should be able to start working on her from the outside. Um, and the risk of her falling and doing anything crazy at that point is minimized. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. We'll see what happens. We might get spooked as soon as we start cutting deck beams, but we'll go slow and see how everything behaves. So now that we got the deck off, we can really see what happens to a boat when you have a leaky deck. And if we look down here, we can see, I can just take out pieces of the frame and the frame's not even attached really to the clamp anymore. And if we come up here, this frame's even worse. Deck beams are barely attached. And these big knees that are in here, they should be very structural and really tying everything together. And look at that. The more we take her apart, just the worse and worse and worse she appears. Um, so our initial kind of uh, assessment of Victoria was absolutely correct. If you're gonna rebuild Victoria, you would do exactly what we were doing and take her completely apart and rebuild her. And in the end, you would have very little of the original Victoria in the new Victoria. And really the only thing that would change if we were to restore her would be the order of operations because um, we would replace things one piece at a time. And in this, we're kind of getting rid of all of the junk and keeping what is good and building all of the new good parts that we need and putting the old parts in it. So I don't know, at the end of the day, it kind of feels like we're restoring her, especially if she's this bad because there was no just coming in and replacing some frames, replacing a piece here and there and getting her seat with her the again. She was, she was shot. All right, so it's about that time. We're uh, gonna pop the last couple deck beams on Victoria and start uh, popping planks, see what she does.
When we got Vicky, we knew she was a parts boat, and we knew we were going to take her apart. And we've been slowly working on it for a while, but today for the first time it really felt real. Uh, as soon as we fired up the sawzall, and especially when we fired up the chainsaw, um, I don't know, it's kind of like taking a life today. <laughs> but what's done is done. Um, eggs are broken, so I guess we got a good omelet out of it. And what we ended up finding today was that some of the planks are riveted, some of the planks are screwed, some of the planks are original, some of the planks are new, and we we're having a hard time getting them off in one piece while she was still boat-like. Uh, and what we found was better was to actually take the chainsaw and as horrible as it sounds, cut down along the stem and the stern and then just follow a plank seam down the boat. And once we did that, we could pop the stands out from underneath there and just let the sides fall as one big unit. And the thing with that is all the planks are attached to all the frames and they're all still nice and tight with each other and the fall was not very severe. Um, so when we did that, all of the planks and all the frames stayed intact. And now that they're down and laying flat, we can go through and get the rivet heads off and we can roll it over and pull the bungs out. And it's just gonna be a lot more comfortable working on it. And we're gonna get a lot more salvageable material that way. So now we've got a big mess on our hands and old Victoria is no more. In the next video, we'll wrap up stripping out the rivet heads to salvage her planking, removing her diesel engine, and taking her down to hopefully salvageable centerline timbers.